The future is dramatically, radically different than the past. But the pattern is clear and entirely consistent with what scientists expect with global warming. Our burning of coal, gas, oil puts emissions in the atmosphere that trap heat, which puts the entire climate system on steroids. We've seen a marked increase in the number of large and damaging fires in California to the fact 12 of the 20 largest and most damaging wildfires in California have occurred in the last 10 years. But it's not about response alone. We don't have enough fire engines and firefighters in California to respond to the fires and protect the structures and deal with the issues that are going to happen. We have to learn to be resilient and live with fire. You know, insurance really makes the world go round. You can't have a functioning economy, you can't buy a car, you can't buy a house, you can't run a business without affordable and available insurance. And there's lots of reasons to believe that climate change threatens uh, us on both those fronts, on both the, the future availability of insurance and its affordability. So, you know, unfortunately the future really is now when it comes to climate change, its physical impacts and its impacts on, on insurers. And, you know, the, the bad news is that if we don't get our act together, fairly soon, you know, the future actually looks quite a bit worse, both for, for, you know, those of us who are citizens, but also for the insurance industry. And with climate change, our goal is, is sort of twofold. It, it's to, to avoid the unmanageable and to manage the unavoidable. And insurers can help on, on both these fronts. They can help us reduce our carbon emissions in the ways that Commissioner Jones suggested by, by creating real incentives for, for low carbon behavior. And that's, that's because from an insurance standpoint, uh, at least at a general level, low carbon behavior tends to be lower risk behavior. Uh, and so insurers have an incentive to, uh, to encourage that, whether it's encouraging people to drive less, uh, to build greener homes, uh, or to invest in clean energy. The trouble with climate change, as we've seen, is that all bets are off. The industry can't understand the price and cost of risk any longer. As we're looking at wildfires in Southern California, as we're looking at flood all over the country, the increased frequency and severity of hailstorms and tornadoes and hurricanes, we have no idea what that cost of risk is going to be. So it puts us in a difficult position. And as Commissioner Jones said, some companies withdraw from areas because they don't understand, they can't understand the risk. We're working as an industry with all kinds of groups, all kinds of modeling people to be able to start predicting what future risk is going to be. It's a difficult job. We're right in the crosshairs of climate change. We know that it takes effective collaboration and integrated planning from the household level to the federal level, as the president said this week, to make our community safer now and more resilient in the face of growing dangers in the future.